Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. I bless him. I bless him for his goodness. I bless the Lord for what he has done. I don't get caught in religion. I'm not ashamed shape of the fashion. I'm not trying to press nobody, but I know that if nothing that had not been for the Lord, he was on our side. Hallelujah. I just know that I feel that I sense that, that God wants to do something supernatural. He wants to turn Moses to lead the people out of bondage. 
earlier in chapter 33, we talked how God talked about, he informed them, he said, I want you to go and I want to fulfill what I told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the problem is in this text, and as you look at the life of Moses, as Moses was leading the people to the promised land, everybody didn't believe God. You got to just be out of yourself and be out of your mind and say, listen, if nobody else believed God, I believe in the word of God. Not everybody in the church is on fire for God. Not everybody in the church has faith enough to believe God. So despite of that, Moses was called to be used as a leader to, to, to fulfill God's plan for the people. But don't ever get caught up on who God can use or who God can qualify or who else God can raise up. The one that you're looking at your nose now, that's the one that God will pick to use for his glory. They might be on crack, they might be a drug addict, they might be an atheist or unbeliever, but don't get caught up on saying that they've done too much to be used by God. Because if walls could talk, if God was willing to tell everybody, your business, you <laughs> sit there looking all pious and high-minded, like you've been in the church all your life. Amen. Some of the things that we went through, I thank God that he didn't expose everything. Six nations that were in this text. Six nations that were just a, a temporary place for these six nations that God was going to move so that the children of Israel can go into a land of milk and honey. But they got upset. God got upset. Listen, I'm not going. Because in 16, Exodus 16, the people started complaining. First of all, I'm going to get the two complaints, that the, the, the two mistakes that you can't make. You can't get too comfortable or too or too too radical to think that God owes you something. Do you think that God, even though He saved us, even though He delivered us, God He done all that, but they got caught up in the flesh. They got caught up because they wanted they, their minds went back to how the Egyptians fed them. They got caught up in uh, Amen, all this food, and, and God heard that, and the glory of God showed up. And God said, listen, in the morning, every day, I'm going to send them. Every day, I'm going to provide for your need. Just because I delivered you don't mean that this is not it. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next week. Don't worry about the doctor's report. Don't worry about what the skeptics and the critics say. I got you covered. They got the plan and they wanted to kill Moses. They said, you brought us this far? Hallelujah. How, how, how are you just going to bring us out and not feed us? God got angry and heard that. He said, wait a minute. I'm going to do this thing. Not only am I going to provide you bread, but I'm going to give you meat. And th th this is not a good thing because they, got, they were murmuring so much that God says that you want to eat it until it come out of your nostrils. They wanted to kill the man of God who was nothing but the leader and they were not upset at Moses but God. But just because you are in a tight situation, instead of compl complaining, murmuring, and sitting there with a bubble of love and giving the devil avenue to come in, you still need to be rejoicing regardless of what's going on. Because Paul said, I have learned what of a state I am to be content. In other words, when I don't have no money, I'm still going to praise God. When everybody else is my back against the wall, I'm still going to give God glory. I've learned this through a process. Hallelujah. Me and my wife, we know, I tell you, we have been through some stuff. So some stuff you got to go through by experience. And it's not based on the condition if I praise God. Well, if God bless me, if he turn it around, then I will praise God. No, 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 that's the wrong mindset. If God don't even do it, if God don't even heal my body, I'm still going to give God the glory. They started complaining. They started murmuring. Say, okay. And then the glory. This is the first one. Now, this is not the first one for Moses. But after that complaining, Exodus 16, the glory of God showed up in the tabernacle. The glory. He can show up if you're good or can show up when you're bad. But the presence of God showed up. And God told them that he was not pleased with their behavior. Now, I got to just say this. I got to teach this a little 
little bit because we can't assume that we can live any type of way. Come into the church and think that God is going to bless us. You got to be in the mind. You have to be committed and obedient unto God's word. That when you're doing that with your whole heart, you can expect to be blessed by God. Not that I'm trying to do it in order to get a bigger house or a bigger car. Just because I want more of God. God got upset. He said, no, 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 I'm tired. They complain and they ain't got nothing good to say. Hallelujah. That's like some of us today. When we really think about it, some people are worse off than you are. Somebody last night slept on the bridge. And here we up here arguing and complaining about minute stuff. Look what God has done for you. You might not have cattle out and shrimp, but you ain't something since last week. You ought to be thanking God. Lord, I might not have everything, but I'm thanking for what little you gave me. My God, I feel a breakthrough in here today. I'm just somebody to go with me. I feel God wants to do something to show his glory. So now they started complaining. God already made your way. He said, I'm going to do it every day. On the sixth day, I want you to take double. So now he made a way for them. The next one in the Exodus, the 32nd chapter, now Moses had went up to Mount Sinai to get the commandments from God. As he went up, Aaron was supposed to be the leader. He was the one that was supposed to maintain. You got to understand there were two million people that came out of Egypt, out of bondage. And this one point here, listen, the problem was that they came out of Egypt, but their mindset still was in bondage. You got to come out of the world and be in into Christ. Just because you move geographical locations doesn't mean that you change. They had a slave mindset. Even though they were in bondage, now they've been liberated. Now they've been free. But yet and still, they had a mindset change. I got a problem with people saying, oh, that's just the way he and she is. There's something wrong with that picture. You've been in church all this time and ain't nothing changed. There's a real difference. Jesus. Mm. He went up. 